Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today I'm doing another interview. My guest today has appeared in many things including series 10 of Waterloo Road. They had a really cool storyline and they're going to tell us a little bit more about that later on. And today Armin will be joining me and he's going to be telling us more about his career and more about his acting life too. So please welcome Armin. Hi, my name is Armin Krimmer. Um I'm an actor uh, raised in London. Uh, I was born in Shiraz. Um, migrated over at the age of seven. Um, I did performing arts straight after secondary school. Um, I got into acting because of uh, my passion, I believe. And I always kind of had a creative side towards me rather than being super academic, which I just kind of struggled with focus and um, just being present in class. I was always a distracted kid. So after secondary school, I pursued acting. Um, I finally found something I'm good at um, and it ignited my passion and I just kicked it off from there. Got an agent, um, I went to drama school and I got super lucky with the timing. As soon as college finished, I booked a series lead for a hit series called Waterloo Road, which aired on BBC, uh, which was like six years ago, I believe. Yeah, six years ago, wow. <laughs> Yeah, well, it sounds like your career so far has been amazing. Earlier on, you were mentioning how your career began. What inspired you to go into the acting world and how did you first really get into it? Um, well, the first time I ever auditioned was in primary school for the role of Oliver Twist. And I actually landed it amongst the 30 other pupils in my class. And I was like, this is it. <laughs> I'm going gonna, gonna to get into acting. Um, I literally just had to deliver a line to my teacher. Please, sir, can I have some more? And from then on, I was like, this is it. I was so into it, you know? After that line, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into it, man. <laughs> um, yeah, so after that, I, I, no, that's just a little joke. It wasn't that exact moment, but um, I, I began in do, doing performing arts in college, uh, done BTEC level three. And they were super helpful. I uh, had wonderful teachers there. They really showed me the way, they, they helped me build a foundation um, such as, you know, work with Stanislavski, Meisner and all other kind of uh, practitioners that helps you, you know, build a, a good solid um, craft. And during college, I went to a part-time drama school called Identity School of Acting, um, which showcases actors such as John Baegar, Letitia Wright, Damson Idris and loads of other wonderful young actors. Um, and during that moment, I I, I realised, cool, I, this is what I want to do and I'm going to, I'm willing to take the risk. Um, I done my first showcase. I was seen by the agency, uh, which I'm still with. Um, and I just got super lucky with the timing and audition phases. So it kind of kicked off from there. That's when I landed Waterloo Road. Fantastic, and it sounds like your early career was an amazing journey. Obviously, you were mentioning about Waterloo Road earlier, so what was it like auditioning for the show? Honestly, I was so, so just shocked that I'm actually auditioning for something that I used to watch myself, that I was a huge fan of myself during secondary school. And I remember in secondary school, as soon as um, you're in class and you get a substitute teacher and everyone's like, yes, we're going to watch something. Let's just put on a film or let's, you know, who wants to do work? Um, we would put on Woolly Road. So that kind of brought, up, brought back memories of my school phase. Um, but the audition phase was was brilliant. Um, it was a bit, it was a bit um, last second because um, something to do with the shooting schedule. They had to. They had to um, put everything together. So um, yeah, uh, I yeah I auditioned. It was last second. Um, I I remember coming out of my my college classroom and running off to my my friend's classroom, saying, "Bro, come out. I've got something to tell you." And he was like, what, "What's up?" And I said, I'm auditioning for Woolly Road. Can you believe it? He was like, no way, what? I was like, yeah, man, auditioning. That's that's when I didn't even land a role. And I happened to, you know, work with it and um, and 
please the director and land a role and I was super excited, super grateful. Yeah, the audition process sounds incredible and I think it's always lovely when you have watched the show before and then you get to go and audition for it. So obviously you were in series 10, so there'd been a very long amount of time, almost a decade of filming before that. So was it kind of nice going on to the yeah. show because it had a massive reputation already? Yeah, there was definitely a, a, a bar to reach because of the uh, wonderful actors and the wonderful writing and just the whole drama piece was, was exceptional. Uh, so there was a lot of pressure uh, on me because it was my first big gig, so I had to live up to it. Um, but everyone was super easy on set. Everyone was very welcoming. Um, just, yeah, super easy to work with. Oh, fantastic. And it sounds like that was amazing. So obviously you've been in the acting world for quite a while now. And I was wondering, do you have any advice to people who want to get started into acting? Um... I guess it's a bit it's a bit tough at first, just like anything you you know you delve into, you're gonna be feeling awkward and odd that you're doing it. Uh, but when you first start off, I would I would recommend to embrace your individuality and embrace your strengths and embrace your weaknesses. Um, don't be afraid to watch yourself and say, "All right, I'm good at this and this, but I feel like I can do better on this field." Um, yeah, to look at yourself objectively and just believe in yourself. And if you really enjoy it, go for it. Yeah, that's some fantastic advice. Thank you so much for sharing it. So in 2017, you appeared as Imran in the TV series Fearless. So what was it like being part of that production? Uh, when I found out I'm going to work with Helen McCrory, I was over the moon because she is just amazing, amazing, amazing to work with. I respect her journey and her, uh, her skill set just she's just wonderful to work with um i was super excited got to work with um uh peter travis um amazing director as well um it was a bit tough for me because the audition process was i had to equip a um an accent for it i think it was a a North Midlands accent. Um, but then when we shot, Pete, uh, Pete told me to actually, you know, put on my normal accent for some reason. Maybe it was just so horrible, my, my, <laughs> my, um, my North, um, my, my other accent that I put on was just so awful. He's just said, you know what, keep it. <laughs> so I was like, you know what, okay, cool. I, Use the one that accepted me for the audition process, you know. Um, yeah, so it turned out to be uh, easier to work with because uh, I just had to quit my own accent. Oh, that's super cool and it does sound like it was an amazing production to be part of and that you got to work with people that you look up to. And my next question actually is about some people who you look up to. So do you look up to anybody in acting? Do you guys ever watch someone and you're like, wow, I can't stop watching you? For me... It's Leonardo DiCaprio and I admire him. And if I ever meet him, I'll give the most awkward hug possible because I just, I just love the guy. He's just so good to watch. Um, I don't know him, but just as an actor, I, I appreciate his work. Um, another young actor as well, uh, who is doing amazing for himself right now is Daniel Kaluuya, which I respect highly. Um, just what he brings to the industry. Um, it's very relatable and just very respectful. Um, yeah, Daniel Kaluuya and Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, those two sound like some great people to look up to. And do you think they kind of inspire you to do well in the acting world as well? For sure, for sure. Yeah, they, they inspire me to, yeah, to, to take a leap of faith and to do what you can really. Yeah, that's amazing and it's great that they inspire you. So earlier on we were talking about what it was like auditioning for Waterloo Road, but what was it like actually being on set and working with the cast and being in front of the camera? Oh, it was an amazing experience. Um, just seeing the cast members that, you know, you used to watch yourself uh, on screen and I got to work with them. Um, it was it was surreal. Um, and as I said, they were easy to work with, so super bonful and just the chemistry was there. And it being in front of 
the huge cameras for the first time, it was a bit daunting, I'm not gonna lie, but you get over it. You just, you doesn't matter how nervous you are, how scared you are, just do it and you get over it. It gets easier. Yeah, definitely, and I love how you said some advice there, that's great. I was reading about your character and it said about your storylines and I noticed your character went through quite a lot in the episodes he was in, so what was it like doing those storylines? Abdul was a was an interesting character because it's something I never imagined that would um that I would come across. Um But it was it was sweet. It was it was sweet to play such a character who is involved with all the other characters and has his own storyline that, you know, people get to witness and his own little journey. Um but yeah, the most uh heartwarming thing about Abdul was the fact that you know he was always a helping hand to the other characters as well so that I really appreciated it wasn't just a lone kind of storyline about adoption it was a he was kind of a helping hand as well yeah definitely and I always love like if, like how characters help each other out and it is fantastic so my next question is do you have any other hobbies like you do alongside acting I like to play pool snooker not snooker. Snooker's tough. Uh, but I play pool. <laughs> um, I recently started playing chess and I was so bad at it that I I nearly stopped playing it. But I was like, you know what? I want to get better at it. I'm going to get better at it. And I just kind of just kept playing it and just make, made mistakes after mistakes after mistakes. And I was like, okay, cool. So your brain starts adjusting to the mistakes that you make. So now I'm actually fairly decent i wouldn't say i'm nowhere near as good but it looks like i can make some pretty coherent moves <laughs> <laughs> fantastic and is chess something that you've kind of taken up in lockdown a little lockdown hobby pretty much yeah yeah yeah, yeah. chess and trying to paint my hair because it was just getting <laughs> super weird growing weirdly yeah it's fantastic I love how like when people try new things in lockdown, it's always best to kind of like use the time wisely. Right? Yeah, we've got so much time on our hands, we might as well do something with it, you know? Yeah, exactly. I definitely agree. So very, very recently, you played Hiram in the TV series The Girlfriend Experience. So what was that like? Uh, it hasn't been aired yet. Uh, it will be airing soon. Um, but it has been announced, so that's all right. Um, it was a wonderful experience, some great locations, and it was shot in London, so I didn't have to stay away from my family for too long. Oh, fantastic. I had no idea it hadn't been released. I was thinking, like, wow, like, there's been a lot of episodes ahead of that show, and it's only 20, like, early 2021. So I have a really difficult question for you next, and it is, what has been the best moment in your career so far? Ooh. Best moment in my career? Uh... I, I, I wouldn't be able to pinpoint one specific moment, but the whole kind of build up of it and just getting to travel is has been a huge privilege uh, for me. Um, I got to travel to Iceland in 2018 to shoot for Black Mirror. Um, and it was just the most beautiful location. I was so, so, so privileged to you know travel there for free and get to do what I love and work with some amazing people. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pinpoint one. Uh, I think just the whole journey of, you know, being, trying to be brave and trying to just delve into the deep end um, and just going with the flow, as you say. Yeah, most definitely. And that's so exciting you got to travel to Iceland. Have you been able to travel anywhere else to do filming? I've been on location a few times, yeah. Um, I stayed in Budapest for three months. Um, I was terrible because they get you a hotel and you start losing the discipline that you have at home with like chores and stuff and doing like your bed sheet. <laughs> so you just come home and everything's just sorted for you. And I was just like, I feel a bit guilty. I shouldn't be living like this. Um, but it was nice. I got to enjoy, you know, room service and whatnot for for quite a while. Um, but it's always good to come back home and do the things that really matter. 
Oh yeah, definitely. And it's great that you get to travel as well. I'm a big fan of like traveling. So it's always cool to hear about these travel stories people have. I have one more question for you. This is always my favorite thing to ask just to wrap the interview up. And you were mentioned earlier, it was about six years ago since you filmed Waterloo Road. And I'm gonna make you think back. And I was just wondering, do you have any um, Waterloo yeah. Road stories you can remember? I have a few, but the one that really stands out is I've said this before, is me dropping on a bike on like the first week in front of the producers, in front of the directors, all of the other actors. And I was just like, oh God, this is so awkward because last thing you want is to be part of a scene that it's not yours, but you still mess it up. But it was fine, you know, got back up. Um, there was this scene where we chasing after Kevin to see if he's fine and he um, he ends up hurting himself and I got a bit excited. I was, I was, I was, I was pedaling down and I always remember my, my, my seat was shorter. Um, this was, one of my friends was actually like, I mean, you should raise your seat because it looks really awkward the way you sit down um, because you can clearly see you're too tall for the bike. So I was like, bro, it'll be fine. I'll just do it. And I'm just pedaling down, pedaling down. And I got a bit too excited and I thought I was in some crazy action scene and I harshly held my brake and I just tilted forward slowly and just dropped in front of everyone. Um, yeah, that's when the director said cut. We laughed. There was, you know, no berating at anyone or saying ah, fix up or whatever. You get on with it and we done it again. Uh, it worked out for the best. Oh, that's a interesting story. So thank you for sharing it. Were you did were you like injured in any way after you fell off the bike? No, no, I just uh, just a little bit of dust on my knee, just um, whacked it off and just kept it moving. Uh, so no, no injuries, thankfully. Yeah, that's very good that there wasn't any injuries. And yeah, what a cool story to share. So we have came to the end of the interview now, and it's been fantastic finding out more about yourself and your career. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me, Charlie. Appreciate it. You're most welcome. And also thank you to everybody who watched this video. I hope you enjoyed the interview and I'll see you next week for another one. Bye guys.